Hi guys. Last week I had Athena moved into this awesome shed here. If you're new to my channel, the lovely hunk of fiberglass here behind me is Athena. She's a 38 foot sailboat, a Warrior 38 from 1987 to be more precise. My plan is to cruise the world aboard her, but first there's a tiny bit of work to take care of. Like I said, I had Athena moved into this shed last week. I did that so that I could start removing the teak deck. But of course, before I can start removing the teak deck, I'll have to remove all of the deck hardware. By the time I had to stop filming last Sunday to meet my own self-imposed deadline for these videos, I'd only removed a few pieces of deck hardware. Fortunately, I have made a bit of progress since then, and a couple of the other liverboards from the marina swung by to lend a hand, which was really nice. But uh, as you might be able to tell, the push pit that was here is no longer here. All of the cleats are gone, and as you might be able to see, the pole pit is gone, the windlass is gone. Basically everything is gone, with the exception of these two hatches right here. Last weekend, the hatch that used to be here proved quite difficult to remove, and I lost a few cabinet scrapers in the battle. Since then, I've received a few tips from you guys, tips for how I could remove the other two hatches a little bit easier. The first thing I did Monday morning was to order a different scraping attachment for my oscillating tool. This is just a cheaper one and it kept falling off, which was extremely annoying. So I picked up this one instead, which I'm hoping will work out better. One thing I noticed immediately is the fact that the new attachment is a lot thinner and I think that's going to be a big plus. Yep, that's on there really well. And that brings me to the first tip I got from you guys, and that was to apply a bit of heat to the frame before attempting to remove it. Apparently that should help loosen up the adhesive a bit. Now this frame has a bunch of little plastic doohickeys on it, but fortunately those just pop right out. Just wedge a screwdriver underneath there and whoopty, they pop right out. To start out with, I've just removed all of the plastic doohickeys from the forward edge of the frame. Let's try applying a bit of heat to this and see if it works. Yep, that's nice and toasty now. Wow, that is so much easier than last weekend. Now, whether that's down to the heat I applied or the new scraper attachment, I don't know yet, but I haven't applied any heat to the other sides of the frame. So let's try one of those now. This part of the frame here is nice and cold. To me it seems like the new scraper attachment is the biggest improvement, but several of you guys recommended applying a bit of heat, so I'm sure that's good advice also. Although just using the scraping attachment itself, the frame heats up quite a bit, so it might be some kind of combination between the scraper and heat. I'm just going to attempt to do this the exact same way I did last weekend, because that seemed to work out really well. And I know this is blatant abuse of a cabinet scraper, but it's the best thing I've got. Dang it! Fortunately, down here is just a V-berth. It's not the pit of cabinet scrapers like last weekend, so this was easy to find. Ah, there we go. So all I need to do now is to remove that hatch. Nope. Sadly, removing that hatch turned out to be very difficult, so I think we'll get back to that tomorrow. 
for now, I want to get started on removing the cheap deck, but that shouldn't prove too difficult. What? These are two of the other liverboards from the marina. That's Camilla and that's Sebastian, and they've gracefully offered to help me remove the teak deck. Ta-da! We are done removing the old teak deck. It took a little over an hour, so it wasn't that bad. And now Camilla and Sebastian are busy removing screws. There are a few problem areas, but I'll show you those tomorrow. For now, I want to get busy removing screws. But before I do that, there's one more thing I want to show you. This is the adhesive that was used between the teak and the deck. And uh, as you can see, it's very brittle and it hasn't adhered all that well to the deck. And that's a big part of why the teak deck was so easy to remove. Look at all these glorious screws. A few weeks back, I estimated there to be over a thousand screws. So uh, yeah, I better get busy. That's one down, 999 to go, I guess. Good morning, guys. Camilla, Sebastian and I called it quits around 3 p.m. yesterday, and I think we got a lot done. So a big thank you to Camilla and Sebastian for all the hard work they put in. Now let's head up and take a look at the progress we made. As you can see, all of the teak is gone. Well, there are still a few tiny strips left, but uh, I'll show you those in just a few minutes. And also 99.9% .9 of the screws are gone. So I think we did really well yesterday. There are still a few screws left that have snapped off just below deck level, but that's okay. I can easily remove those later on. I'm sure you guys are curious as to what the deck looks like now without the teak on there. And yeah, it doesn't look great. And there are some problem areas like I mentioned yesterday. I've learned by now that whenever you take apart an old boat, you're bound to find a few surprises. So I was fully expecting there to be a few gifts hiding underneath the teak deck. But why don't we go ahead and take a quick look at the issues I've found so far. The first issue is a bit of a classic. It's a soft deck, meaning the deck flexes a bit when you walk on it in certain areas. It's not that pronounced here aboard Athena, but I think I'm going to have to replace some of the core. I have yet to figure out how much I need to replace though. I want to stress that I'm not upset about the fact that I'll have to replace some of the core. For one, I was expecting to have to do some repairs, and also it wouldn't do any good to get upset about it. Plus, it's not that big of a job. Heck, even if I choose to replace all of the core, I mean, sure, it's going to be time consuming, but it's not going to be crazy expensive, and it is something I can do myself. The second issue, and this is actually the root cause of most of the other issues I'm going to show you today, is the fact that the yard or the designer, whoever, chose to put the sandwich on top of the deck, meaning the core, that's this hump here, is on top of the deck instead of underneath the deck. Here's a little bit of a different angle where you can clearly see the hump that's here. That is the core in the sandwich construction. This is a very unusual solution and a pretty sucky one, to be honest. The first issue with having the core be on top of the deck instead of underneath the deck is the fact that I've got this unsightly gap over here between the core and the tow rail. I'm not going to be putting on a new teak deck, so I'll have to pretty this up somehow. And the best solution I've been able to come up with so far is to take a router to this edge here, round it over to be a nice shape that matches the curvature of the tow rail. As you might be able to tell, the edge is quite jagged right now, and it doesn't match the curvature of the tow rail either. But I think I can fix that. I am crossing my fingers that I can pretty up this area without removing the tow rail, because if I need to remove the tow rail, that kind of opens up a world of hurt. The second issue that's caused by having the core be on top of the deck instead of underneath it is very much exaggerated by the fact that the cockpit combing over here, or whatever this part is called in English, is a part of the bottom layer of the deck sandwich. That means there's a gap up here 
which was just sealed up with a bit of caulking. Of course, that failed at some point, meaning lots of water could get in here, which in turn caused the deck to delaminate. The third and final issue I want to show you that's related to having the core of the deck sandwich being on top of the deck is related to the tow rail and it's up forward here and it has to do with the teak that was used to fill the gap between the core and the tow rail. This is from a different part of the boat but this teak here was used to fill that gap and as you can see there's plenty of some kind of polyester or epoxy in there too. Using something like this piece of teak here to fill that gap is not really ideal. Remember, there was a teak deck on top of this, so in case your bolts that's used to secure the tow rail to the boat started leaking, how on earth were you supposed to fix that? You couldn't, unless you removed the teak deck first, which seems kind of excessive. And that brings us to what I'll be working on today, and that is to remove the very last bit of teak that's aboard the boat. And that's some of the teak that's used to fill that gap. Now it looks like at some point someone tried to fix an issue with the deck up forward by pouring a bunch of epoxy in here. And uh, yeah, that's not really great because like I mentioned, I don't want to replace the tow rail. For one, it's expensive and it's also going to be a lot of work. So I'm really hoping I can get this out of here without damaging the tow rail. Well, I guess there's nothing to it but to do it. I've moved a little further aft because I think this end is going to be a little bit closer to what the rest of the boat was like. And uh, yeah, this should be a lot easier than the forward part. As you could see, that wasn't so bad, but I can see now that the epoxy or whatever this is has made its way all the way down here. So yeah, let's see how easy this is going to be to remove. And yes, 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 I know, blatant abusive tool. As you can see, that's fairly slow going. Huh, that looks like epoxy down there, but uh, how on earth did it get down there? It must have seeped down there, but yeah, it needs to go. Yeah, and there is the tow rail. It looks like they poured a lot of gel coat down there. I do not know why, but yeah, that also needs to go. Huh. This is kind of therapeutic. It's like being an archaeologist and uncovering the sins of past owners. The tiny piece I removed from down here, about this big, took 20 minutes. So I figure, yeah, by the end of the day, I should be done. Yes. Getting a big piece like that is like winning the lottery. I think I've come up with a system that works. So the top part is this stuff, you can see it right here. If I remove that, I can get to this, which sits in here and keeps this one here from lifting up. So now that I've removed the stuff that was in there, this should just lift up. Mmm. 
Oh, oof, that does not smell like roses. Hmm. There's some kind of gooey stuff down here. Yuck. Well, now there's just a small matter of the five foot piece that's left. Ta-da! Fast forward a few hours and here we are. All the teak is gone. And by a few hours, I actually mean four hours. I'll just do a quick bit of tidying up here so that I can show you guys the finished result. Now, I know the tow rail still looks like crap, but I figured I'd try and clean that up tomorrow and see if that's salvageable. Here is a little bit better view of the tow rail. Yeah, not looking that hot. That took a little bit longer than I had expected, but at least that teak is now gone from both sides of the boat. Ha! <sighs> I am gonna call it quits for today, even though it's only four o'clock, but that's because there's a music festival next to the marina. And apparently having thousands and thousands of drunk people around all night is not conducive to a good night's sleep. So I'm pretty tired, but I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning, guys. Just like that, it's Sunday morning. On my way here, I picked up some cleaning supplies for the tow rail. It's nothing fancy, it's just a bit of soap, something to scrub with, and a pair of gloves. Yada yada yada, one part cleaner, 20 parts water. And 20. In no way do I expect the tow rail to be like new when I'm done cleaning it. But like I said yesterday, I would really prefer not to have to replace the tow rail. Athena is going to be a cruising boat and not a museum piece. So in my book, it's okay if the tow rail looks a little worn. After having scrubbed the tow rail for about 10 minutes, this is what that first section looks like. And as you can see, there is a bit of corrosion here and it looks far from brand new. But considering the cost, both in terms of time and money of putting on a new tow rail, I'm very tempted to just leave this old one because I can always replace the tow rail later on. I've scrubbed a little over a meter of the tow rail now and I think that looks pretty good. Now that little piece there took around 35 minutes. Going off of that and also figuring in that my efficiency is gonna go up a little the more I scrub, I'd say I could have the entire tow rail scrubbed in about two days. But that's okay because a task like that is perfect for me swinging by after work and doing a few hours worth of scrubbing. So yeah, that's okay. I'm not going to bore you with more scrubbing of the tow rail in this video. Although, to be honest, as soon as I'm done shooting this video, I'm probably just going to spend the rest of the day scrubbing the tow rail because I don't have a lot of energy today because of that stupid music festival. Well, the other main reason for me moving Athena into the shed was so that the hull could dry out. I took a fresh set of moisture readings last week, the day after I had moved her into the shed. To be honest, I am expecting to see absolutely no change in the moisture readings from last week. Simply just moving Athena into the shed is not going to dry the hull out any quicker. At least that's my theory. Yeah, there's absolutely no measurable difference in the moisture readings after Athena spent one week here in the shed. But that's okay. I'm putting all of my trust in that homemade hot whack type system I mentioned a few weeks back. But it is proving to be a little bit of a challenge to get my hands on the silicon heater mats I'll use to heat up the hull while it's under vacuum. With a little bit of luck, I should be able to order the silicon heater mats I need next week. After that, there's about a two to three week lead time, but that's okay. That should still leave me plenty of time to get the hull dried out. As an ending for this video, I think I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of a cliffhanger. And that cliffhanger is gonna be moisture readings from the deck. Wet, 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 wet. <gasps> Dry? Nah, I'm just kidding. It's wet too. Yep, 
it's all soaking wet, but that's okay. That just means more videos for you guys. Hopefully, I'll be able to get my hands on the materials I need before next weekend. That way I can start working on the deck in the next video. If that doesn't happen, the next video might just be me scrubbing a tow rail for 20 minutes, so you better cross your fingers. Well guys, that is gonna be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below, and if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.